This video is going to provide a short introduction to using the localization features in DocumentX 2010. Um, I've opened up the .NET sample project that ships with DocumentX 2010 and this currently contains just the one locale, the primary locale, which in our case is English. And what I'm going to do is enable localization within this project by adding a new locale. I'm going to select Japanese from my drop down list of available system locales here. Let's find it. Okay. So this has done a couple of things in our project. First of all, it's added the new locale to the locales folder on the Project Explorer. It's also opened up the locale editor for me to select a couple of properties relating to how the output is encoded and which phrase language is used for the automatically generated output. So it's selected automatically for me the phrase language uh, Japanese Japan and it's also selected for me the content encoding of Unicode which unless you're producing HTML help one CHM output is the recommended output format because the other output types help two uh, web ready output uh, Microsoft help you support Unicode content so for those output types there's nothing specific you need to do if you're outputting to HTML help one to CHM you need to select the encoding that matches the language of the content that you're going to be authoring in this particular project. That's because the HTML help viewer and compiler don't support Unicode, so you need to define a specific encoding and locale that you're going to be working in with those. So I'm going to stick with Unicode encoding for this uh, particular exercise. I'm going to close down the locale editor there. Now that my project is enabled for localization, I can see a drop down on the ribbon here that allows me to switch between the different locales. And if I switch to Japanese uh, as my current locale, I get a highlighted indicators on the Project Explorer for items that require localization. So if I hover over those icons, it's telling me a localization is missing for my current locale. And what I can do for each of those items is open the item up for edit. Because I chose the phrase language of Japanese in the locale editor just a moment ago, the automatically generated portions of the page here, the see also heading um, and the see also link up the top here, are automatically translated. So we ship with eight different languages for which these phrases are uh, translated out of the box, and you can add new translations for additional languages if you wish. So what I'm actually going to do here is I'm going to grab the content from the English version of this topic or rather just the first paragraph here. And I'm just going to, for the purposes of demonstration, I'm going to run it through a machine translator and just paste that into the Japanese content here. And I'm also going to paste in a translation for the Japanese title. What you might have noticed on the properties grid here is that uh, localization issues are also highlighted in here so as I'm working with properties such as the title I can spot the localization issues that might be outstanding and I can also work with each of the different locales that I'm translating to within the property grid by expanding that individual property I can see both the Japanese and the primary locale so I'm just going to close that topic off now okay so that's how I go about uh, translating localizing my content for conceptual topics um, I can also change, in the same way as I changed for the topic title there, I can change the name of categories so that they're automatically translated in see also link categorization. Uh, and I can also translate the content of my content files. Now the way that I would do this in here is I'd create a new content file for my Japanese content, select the item that uh, content file is for. And I'm going to just give that a name that makes it specific to Japanese content. And when I have the content file open, I can open the content file properties and I can select the locales for which this content file is going to contain content. So this content file is going to contain the Japanese content. And if I open the English one, I can select just that locale for the English one. Okay, if I close those two down and now reopen them, we can see that the uh, content file for which I've defined uh, the Japanese locale appears with the Japanese phrase table so I can uh, get a good preview of what the content is going to look like and the English content file automatically comes up with the English phrases uh, because I've defined in the content file properties that that's the locale 
I'll be working within this content file. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and kick off a build with the limited um, changes I've made to the project there. And the build process uh, prompts me for which locales I want to build, so I'm going to build both the primary locale and the Japanese output. Okay, so I've skipped to the end of the build process here, and if I drag in the generated web output for that build, I've got two tabs open here. One's the primary locale output, and the second one's the Japanese. So we can see, although I've got an awful long way to go, I've just uh, translated just that one conceptual topic. Um, much of the core reference content um, has been translated for me automatically, all the standard phrases and terminology in there, and even stuff in the web output here for the different go-to links and the different pages um, that I can view in the web output has been translated according to the phrase language that I've chosen. So that concludes this short video demonstrating some of the tools available in DocumentX 2010 to help you localize your documentation output.